Hey, welcome back to the shop. This is Zach over at MB Woodworks. Today I'm going to be putting together and getting my new CA Technologies pressure pot ready for use for casting. So I'll kind of walk you through the fittings that you're going to need and you know what it looks like out of the box and what you need to kind of put together. It's pretty simple actually. There's not a whole lot involved in it. And uh, yeah, so I, I haven't done a video walking through this pressure pot yet and I just got a new one. So I'm pretty excited to have two of these guys now. Casting's going to be good. So uh, let's get to it. I'll get the camera in here and kind of show you what's going on, what components you're going to need, and uh, what it comes with. All right, so it's going to come, and actually the clamps are going to be on it when they ship it, but uh, it's going to come with pretty much two pieces in the box. You're going to have a small little box. That is where your gauge is going to be. That doesn't come mounted. Everything else is as you see it. So you're going to have a fluid outlet, they call this, already mounted an air release valve, the safety valve, and then this is the air inlet. This is where you're gonna mount the, the gauge and all the rest of the plumbing and the handles on it. And again, it's gonna come fully clamped and closed. And then when you open it up, inside you're gonna have casters. I don't use those. And some instructions, I don't use those either. So, that's all there is to it out of the box. All right, so what we have here is the gauge, and again, you know, the gauge comes with the pressure pot, and then four, you know, plumbing fitting components that you're gonna have to add. On the right-hand side, this is just a quarter-inch female cap. It's just gonna cap off that side, we don't use it. On the left-hand side, the first fitting is an elbow, and in this case, it's quarter-inch female-female thread. Start that off, and then the next one is a ball valve. I have a male thread that goes into this elbow, and a female on this end. Now, you know, you can get different combinations of male and female, just you just need to make sure that they all fit, you know. You have to start with a female elbow, at least one side of it has to be female to go onto the, the gauge here. Uh, but like I said, easiest way is just get female, female, quarter inch elbow, male, female, ball valve, and this is just an air hose connector that is male that goes into the ball valve. All of these components go onto the gauge and the gauge goes onto the lid. That's all there really is to it. So I'll get a little bit of a wider angle and uh, kind of just quickly put all this stuff together and then we'll get everything going. We'll get it ready. All right, so with the gauge mounted on the lid, all we gotta do is test it out and make sure that there's no leaks. Now, I usually don't do extensive testing when I'm doing this. It's either gonna hold pressure or it's gonna have a leak. If there's a leak, the easiest way to find the leak is grab a, 
a spray bottle, put some soapy, not, not heavily soapy, but put a little bit of soap and water in there, uh, mix it up, you know, like shake the bottle up and then spray around un under pressure, you know, when this thing's under pressure, basically, spray the fittings and you'll find where air is leaking out because bubbles will form. That soap will create, uh, you know, bubbles where that air is coming out. So that'll help you find any leaks if you need it. Um, again, uh, you're probably not going to have a massive leak. It's probably going to be a slow leak. And so I just kind of keep an eye on whether it's holding pressure or not. If it's not holding pressure, you obviously have a leak somewhere. And uh, you'll just have to use that spray bottle method or whatever. Uh, what you'll have to do is just take that joint apart and then, you know, tape it real well and then maybe tighten it harder. So no big deal. I'm going to test this guy out real quick and see if everything is good to go on it. Uh, from the first look, like I said, I'll have to kind of keep an eye on things over time to make sure that everything's sealed, but uh, I haven't had any major issues with, especially this CA Technologies pot. Uh, I don't think it's going to have any leaks that weren't my own <laughs> plumbing problems. So let's tighten this guy up and hit some air with it. I'm going to stop real quick. One thing I do want to mention is the first time you're doing this, your, your uh, regulator is not going to be set. So you got to really keep an eye on the gauge. You don't want to, you know, go way over. Uh, we can go ahead and set this. Now, again, with all of these things, you just turn it in, uh, you know, clockwise, basically. You turn this knob to make the pressure go up, and you turn it counterclockwise to set it lower. I'm going to see where we're at. I'm actually going to, you want to open it pretty far. And it should stop, you know, at a pretty low PSI. So let's test, let's test this out. I'm gonna open it. There, that stopped. That means that the regulator's set at like 22 PSI. So from there, you just keep cranking in slowly until you reach whatever pressure you want to be running this at. All right, I got the regulator dialed in at 70 PSI. I, I'm listening, I don't hear any leaks, I don't see anything, you know, the, the gauge isn't dropping as, I, <laughs> as I'm looking at it. I'll have to keep an eye on this, see if there's a slow leak, you know, over a few hours if it starts dropping. But everything sounds or, you know, looks and sounds pretty good on this thing. Now, uh, again, with the regulator, I got mine dialed in at 70 PSI. I personally, my kind of, my rule, I guess, is I don't want to exceed well, you'd never want to exceed the max working pressure of a pressure pot, but I usually keep it, I don't go over, you know, 10 below the max. I, I'll, so I'll, on this one, the max is 80. I'm not going to ever run mine more than 70. I just don't think that it's a good idea to kind of tempt fate sneaking up on the max. The other issue with that is, you know, this gauge may not be dead on accurate. So I like to give myself some buffer. Now, you know, it's up to you when you're running your pressure pot, whatever you feel is comfortable, but I definitely, definitely do not recommend exceeding whatever the working pressure is. Um, again, on this one, it's clearly stated on the lid that it's 80 PSI for this one. Now, one other thing to note, I don't necessarily run this at 70 on every single casting. You know, if it's just resin, I usually stop around 60 because I don't really need more pressure than that necessarily. I think that 60 is a good number, personally, it's good, you know, it's a good amount, but I don't need to go any higher, so that's all I use, and, it, and I get good results. Now, when I'm doing embedding, I will go to 70 on this, because I think higher pressure is better for, you know, pushing the resin into the crevices and stuff of the wood or, you know, pasta or whatever I'm doing. So, that's just kind of how I operate. Again, it's up to you what you feel comfortable with, but do not ever exceed the safe working pressure of a pressure pot. So, I hope this video was helpful. I, again, I'm, I'm still working on trying to get even better camera angles, so I, I hope that the footage was good and it was kind of clear, you could see what I was doing. If you have any comments or questions, definitely leave those down below. Uh, you can email me at zach at envywoodworks.com. I'm out there on Facebook and Twitter. You can get a hold of me there. So yeah, I hope this was a good video. I hope it was helpful. And if you have any questions, definitely don't hesitate to ask me. And I'll see you in the next video.